Thank you for joining us for the Seaway Valley Prevention Council's presentation on gaming and social media, the unknown dangers. My name is Chelsea Bartlett. I am the program director at the Seaway Valley Prevention Council. Our agency, located in Ogdensburg, New York, is dedicated to providing quality prevention and recovery services in Northern New York. As we go through our presentation today, you'll be hearing from a lot of us. That includes Jason Novak, our Drug-Free Communities Coalition Coordinator, Janelle Riordan, a health educator in the St. Lawrence County Schools, Jordan Hatch, our Kara Grant Health Educator, Jacob Goyko, our Horizons Youth Clubhouse Assistant Manager, Amanda Green, our SUNY Potsdam intern from the Public Health and Human Performance Department, and Travis Jordan, our Reality Check Coordinator. And that's Kate. Catherine Olmstead is our Marketing and Community Engagement Coordinator. While you might not hear her voice today, she's the face behind the curtain that helped us bring this presentation to you. We're here to talk about social media and gaming dangers. In a time when school is on our computers, it's even harder to resist picking up our phone or our controller. But do we know all the risks that we're taking? Before now, did you know that the picture on the left is a substance in a video game? Before now, did you know that the image on the right is an example of gambling in a video game? While we may be having fun playing, we may also be exposing ourselves to suggestions of substance use in gambling and increasing our risk of physical and mental health issues. Let's make sure we're informed and know the risks we're taking. And let's start today by talking about gaming. All right, so here are some of our game ratings um, what, and what they mean, okay? So these are the four most basic ones um, that you guys might already know about, but we'll just go over it just so we can break it down a little bit, okay? So E is for everyone, which means anyone can play these games. Um, anyone under 10, it doesn't matter your age, these games are gonna be fine for any player to play. E10 games are a little bit more in depth. Um, they tend to have a little bit more action, a little bit more drama, um, but these are still games that you really don't have to worry about anything or being, ex you know, exposed to anything and um these are still fine games for you to play at any age really um t for teens um these are where you're going to start seeing a little bit more things um throughout the games that you might um not know about or you might um not realize but these games also tend to be a little bit more violent have a little bit more in-depth um, storylines, um, things like that. They might have some humor that, you know, might not be the most appropriate for your age or maybe also in-game gambling or things like that. So games that like allow you to play poker or dice or something like that. So those are games that you might want to be aware of what you're doing in these games. Um, and then for our last one that we're going to talk about is M, so that's for mature, so these are for adults, mainly, anyone who is over the age of 17. Um, these games aren't really games that hold anything back, so these are going to have really violent games, some bad language, um, and some other adult contents that um, maybe you should not be seeing, so maybe ask your parents um whether it's okay to be playing these games or not something that you guys should be on the lookout for or maybe start recognizing um some of the hidden messages within games um having to do with substances so game developers with so are the people that you know make the game or create the game um they've normalized drugs alcohol and tobacco products into their games um through imagery and communication or so like um, which means like between two characters talking to each other about something, something as simple as that. Um, so like for an example, like a Resident Evil game. All right. So these games, like, there's a green herb that you can collect and you 
mix it with something so that way you can improve your health. That is a reference or that is basically making an imagery of some type of drug that in real life terms would be like marijuana for an example. So it's just something that could connect that you guys might connect and it's giving you guys exposure to these substances and making it so it's normal to see these around. So that's something that you really want to pay attention to um, when you're playing video games is looking out for these things and, be, and realizing that, you know, this drug in real life isn't going to make my health improve or isn't going to make it so I'm super fast or super strong or something like that. These uh, drugs would have real consequences and real causes real problems in our lives. So you want to make sure that you're recognizing that or realizing that um, these drugs and these alcohol and these tobacco products within these games, even though they may help you within the games out in real life, they're not something that you want to be doing or that's going to help you and make your health better or anything like that. They're actually pretty bad for you. So. What is online gaming? Online gaming describes any video games that offers online interactions with other players. So that is like the majority of all video games now. Uh, if you're somebody you know or your child is playing video games, there's a very good chance that it's online gaming. So there are a few things that are very important. Um, so like I have here, what does this mean? So some games let children play and chat with anyone around the world. This means that uh, they might come across offensive language and bullying. And this next one here is very important. Not everyone online is who they say they are. Children should avoid giving out personal details that could identify them or their location. That is super important because I'm sure you guys have heard, but if not, there has been many instances where kids uh, become very um, close, you know, and comfortable with people they play with over a long period of time. But, you know, a lot of them end up being like predators. Um, so when the kids tell them their information, where they live, you know, they go to meet up, they actually end up getting kidnapped, uh, excuse me, and uh, even uh, killed in some instances. So it's very important to teach your kid, you know, stay private, don't tell people that they don't, even if they come close, you know, tell them, even if they're comfortable, they're not everyone is who they say they are. If they don't personally know them, always stay private and stay safe. Some games encourage players to buy extra elements during the game. This is called microtransactions. You know, uh, especially games like Fortnite, where your character you can buy with real money to make himself look like famous people. Um, you know, a lot of people do this, and that's how they make a lot of their money. So it's very important to make sure that your credit card is not on the system, so they can uh, obviously rack up these big bills. And children may find themselves either bullying or being bullied. You know, no one ever wants to hear or think it, but you know, your child could be one that is bullying as well. So it's always important to, you know, catch that sooner than later. And try to nip it right in the butt and, you know, and make sure it doesn't happen anymore. And then video games can manipulate brain chemistry, especially after long-term use. This kind of is going to tie into further in our presentation about uh, video game addiction. Okay, okay, this is where I have to switch it quick. Let's cut this out. <clears throat> so is video gaming an addiction? So video game addiction is controversial. The reason is, is because it's not fully classified as an addiction yet, but it is in the DSM, which is like the gold standard of mental illness. That online gaming disorder is a thing and it's a room for much study. But here is what we do know. So compulsive video gaming can lead to weight gain, poor posture, increased likelihood of type two diabetes, um, and et cetera. You know, it's just things that a lack of, um, you know, physical activity can, can uh, cause. Also a lack of social engagement. You know, a lot of times people who, especially gamers, especially gamers, people game for hours a day. Obviously and that takes away, you know, hanging out with your friends, going to the mall, just doing things like that. Um, problems with concentration and attention. There's a lot of games that are just fast paced. You have to take instant, um, you know, your, your reflexes, you have to be instant. Um, you know, this has increased ADD and ADHD in kids tremendously over, uh, you know, the years as video games continue to um, progress. Um, seizures and repetitive stress injuries. This is also a pretty big one. Um, in the beginning of most video games, there is disclaimers 
um, about epilepsy, you know, and just to make sure you're safe and you're comfortable with it. Um, you know, just so these seizures don't happen, but video games can cause seizures in people. So it's very important to, uh, you know, monitor uh, what games that your child is playing. Similarity to other addictions, um, video game addictions are similar to other addictions in terms of time. Um, you know, the amount of time people who both play video games and use substances spend most of their time trying to get the substance or play the video game or, you know, a lot of their time is just thinking about it, which goes into the strong emotional attachment. Um, including myself, I was a big gamer when I was younger as well. Um, you know, and a lot of the time during school, that's all I could think about was just getting home and getting on with the friends, you know, and playing until I went to bed. Um, you know, this causes a lot of problems with homework, um, studying, and attention, all that kind of stuff. Um, pattern of social difficulties, uh, we're going to kind of talk about this a little bit more in the next slides, but, um, you know, lacking the social uh, aspect of your life, you know, just playing a lot of, uh, alone by yourself um, can really, you know, put a damper on your social uh, skills. Age can matter. Um, you know, kids, especially very young, they're like sponges. Um, the, all these effects that we mentioned or that I have mentioned um, just are much stronger in kids like 10 and under, you know, if the younger kid, the younger they start playing, uh, the more that these effects will take place. And then there are some things, like again, I put in quotes, gaming addiction. Um, like I said, changes in behavior, um, there's social isolation, people will become, uh, they can become depressed, anxious, um, no longer do things that they used to do, nor in previously enjoyed activities. Uh, it could be a declining performance in school, which happened to me. Um, you know, all you just want to do is play games and you don't want to get off to your homework. Um, and, you know, you play five hours a day, but it just seems like an hour, you know, you lose track of time and then it's too late and you don't want to do your homework at like 10, 11 at night. It's a, it's a vicious cycle. It really is. Um, then you have trouble sleeping, you know, when you're thinking of gaming or you're just, we're in this huge fight and you're all excited and hyped up, but it's 11 at night, you have a hard time going to sleep. There is withdrawal symptoms as well. You know, when you take the video game away and they start having like temper tantrums or you know, they start getting mad at you and stuff like that. It's very real stuff. What makes gaming addictive? I know for me, when there's a high score involved, being able to beat every time, just giving me the satisfaction of being able to beat my own high score, um, being able to beat my rival in a video game, because I tend to get very competitive when like in sports and just gaming in general. Um, being able to beat the game, having that satisfactory that you've accomplished something from beginning to end. Um, you can also role play, which means you can create uh, like your own character and pretty much just do their own storyline, whatever you pick, anything. Um, there, there's also a discovery aspect of playing video games. Um, where you get to just roam around, like in Minecraft, where you can farm materials, play with friends. Um, there's also, you can build tons of relationships through gaming. Um, there's also consequences to gaming as well. Um, dopamine addic addiction, just being able to sit down and play can be very addictive to some people. Um, motivation can be reduced. Uh, you can suppress your emotions, which means just keeping them in and like hiding yourself away just by playing video games, not having to deal with your emotions because you're so distracted by what's in front of you. Um, there's also other health risks that may be involved with video gaming, like gamer's thumb. I never knew that was a real thing until actually doing the research. Uh, it's where like your ligaments in your thumb or tendons just like stiffen and it's like your hands are stuck there. Um, you can also have a poor mental health, just not being able to express like how you feel because you're so physically into that game world where you're just distracted by everything. Um, you can be socially disconnected from the world. That means not being able to go outside, hang out with friends because you're just so distracted by the by the video game. Um, also, you can be exposed to toxic gaming environments, which I will talk later on 
in the presentation about cyberbullying because that's a big thing going on with um, gaming. Um, you can have poor grades. You know, you can have professional, um, your professional performance may decrease because you're just like always thinking about playing video games. Um, escapism can happen, you know, hiding away in your room all day, just escaping from the outside world because you just want to sit and play video games. Um, there's also treatments for gaming addiction. Uh, you can gradually reduce the time spent on video games. Uh, you should be able to recognize uh, an addictive behavior with video games just by always wanting to play, sitting down, doing nothing, like not doing homework or wanting to hang out with your friends because you're just so into this game that you can't get off of it. Uh, you should be able to understand the causes or triggers of gaming addiction. Um, you and your parents should be able to develop strategies that can help overcome your addiction to gaming. Um, one thing that I used to do when I was a kid, if I was um, gaming too much, my parents would take away the, the controllers or anything so I wouldn't play it for a while. Or they would kick me off and tell me to go outside or read a book or something just so I don't get stuck you know, in the gaming environment where I don't want to get off and do anything. Um, you should also understand the harm of what gaming can do to you. You know, previously, like I said, grades could fall. Um, you'd be socially disconnected. And that's the tragedy of today's day and age. Everyone is stuck on technology. And I know, especially during COVID, everyone's on technology. So there's different things you can look up or do and Unfortunately, it's sad, but it's true. Um, and it's the same thing that's happening with gaming. You know, during COVID, gaming has really, really gone up because everyone's stuck inside. All right, so now we're gonna transition right into social media um, and substance use and how those two are connected. Uh, they definitely are. Um, but first we get into, you know, why there's a lot of negative things out there about social media, but I want to talk about some of the positive things that are out there for you guys. Um, as you guys know, as kids and, and students, you know, teenagers, that you know there's a lot of positive things that come from social media, but there's also a lot of negative things. But uh, we'll start with some of the positives here. Social media accounts help us to make connections all over the world with a variety of different people. As you guys know, whether it's Facebook Messenger, if you guys are, you know, that's for your older, for your parents now, right? I've heard that from a lot of kids saying that Facebook, you know, it's for the older crowd. Um, but it is a way for you to connect with people that you might not see. Maybe your friend moved away when you were younger, um, when your best friends from school and uh, you don't get to see them very often. It's a way for you to still stay connected with them. Snapchat, seeing a quick picture of your friend, maybe that you haven't seen again in a long time and just cracking an inside joke with them through a Snapchat picture. It's a great way to stay connected. Um, so it allows you to talk with your friends and family that may be hours away or just down the hall from us. Um, known to be a source for updating users on news discussions and most famously talking about opinions and feelings. Uh, so as we know, you guys know, I'm sure through Facebook and, and Twitter and whatever else that, you know, platform that you can share opinions, tons and tons of opinions that are out there. Um, and again, opinions aren't right or wrong, and it, but it is a good way for you to share the same opinion as someone else. And maybe you can connect in that way, uh, whether it's sports or uh, music, uh, maybe you like the same music and sharing the same opinion as somebody else as your favorite country singer of, of something of that sort. Um, and it's great. And again, I follow, I'm a big sports guy, so I follow all my favorite sports teams on Facebook and um, other, you know, Twitter. I'm not big on Twitter, but I do have, um, they, you can follow things on there. Um, so I follow the Montreal Canadiens on, on Facebook. So I see a lot of their videos, the highlights of games, you know, locker room footage, um, behind the scenes, kind of what the players are doing, practice footage, um, all sorts of things that you wouldn't normally see in that if I didn't follow that um, social media site. It can make you feel less alone or isolated. So again, a way to stay connected with your friends, um, especially amidst the pandemic that you guys are at home and doing virtual learning. It's a good way to stay connected with your friends that you aren't seeing every day. Allows teens to share ideas and explore their creative sides. As you guys know, um, there's a lot of creativity in social media, which is great. Um, and then several social media accounts that are trying to increase knowledge and spread information on substance use um, in a positive light. So, um, you know, sending the right messages, the right 
um, the facts, the, you know, the correct facts that are out there. There's a lot of websites that are doing the opposite and, you know, sending the bad, the bad stuff that you don't necessarily want to see, but there's a lot of good out there too. Um, so just being able to decipher between the two. So obviously there's, it's not all bad, but now we're going to get into some of the negative things um, about social media and substance use and how they are connected. Uh, so some of the reasons that they're connected, social media glamorizes substance use, um, you know, and, and, and if, if you see your favorite you know, country singer, like I said before, or your favorite athlete, and they're using and they're, they're they're taking pictures with using alcohol with their friends, and they're out partying and having a good time, and it glamorizes it. It makes you guys see it in a positive light and um, think that you know you possibly you need that to have fun when in reality you really don't. It hurts mental health, leads to more exposure to such substances, and people may offer drugs to you. Um, so going back to hurts mental health, obviously we, we we've talked about that. You know, there's the positive side of being able to connect. There's also the negative side of, of being disconnected and not being able to decipher between what's, you know, real and, and what's social media. Because I know a lot of kids are going down that path that they use social media so much. It's it's an avenue where some of them have become addicted, as I know I'm sure some of my colleagues have talked about the addiction to social media um, and, you know, being addicted to that like or that notification on your phone. And that's become troublesome. Social media sites are growing in popularity and number. Many people are starting to look at the connection. So it's not just you guys, not just me talking about it. A lot of people are noticing this. This is a worldwide thing. Uh, the whole world's using social media and they're taking notice. Uh, most cases of heavy use social media cause depression and loneliness. That's a scary statistic right there. And then teens who use social media are more likely to use tobacco, alcohol, and marijuana than the peers who don't. The more you see it, the more apt you are to use it or the more apt you are to try it for the first time because you're being advertised to whether it's consciously or subconsciously, um, you're seeing it a lot more than you would if you didn't have social media. Social media and tobacco use, we're gonna roll right into this. This is right up my alley for, um, I'm a reality check coordinator. So talking about tobacco is what I do all the time for my job. Um, so marketing strategies, tobacco, electronic, cigarette, and vape and alcohol industries have widely integrated social media platforms and you know, their marketing strategies. So they're using their advertisements um, because they know you guys are the ones that are primarily using social media platforms. And in 2018, this stat of 9,000 in active individual dual Twitter followers, researchers estimated over 80% were between the ages of 13 and 20 years old. Um, you have to be 21 to purchase a tobacco product in New York State. So that's not even of age. That's all people under the age of purchasing um, are over 80% of them are following the dual Twitter account. Now, obviously, we know that there's over more than 9,000 um, followers now. Um, but that was back in 2018. And then using hashtags, you guys, I know what hashtags are, but if you look at the top left picture there, boozing, drunkenness, booze, alcohol, intoxication, those are all hashtags that are going to connect with other photos. Um, it's opened up doors for companies to um, advertise in a different way of using hashtags to get you to look at those links and look at those pictures and look at their products. And then social media is harder to regulate. Um, exposure to substance use imagery is associated with subsequent onset and use. Um, which is why, why drinking alcohol and using drugs in movies warrants an R rating. So um, you guys know it's, it's, that's why movies are rated R is because of the things that you see in the movie um, isn't always the same on social media platforms since it's harder to regulate and harder to manage. If you look at the bottom left, I could open Snapchat right now and see 50 stories of people doing vape tricks. That's from Penelope, age 14. I know you guys, um, whether you're in high school or whatever, I'm sure some of you guys have seen social media or Snapchat stories of people using uh, vapes and e-cigarettes. It's become a major issue and was epidemic, frankly. So um, I'm not surprised that people are seeing that, but it is an issue that we need to deal with um, because that's not something we want to see all the time. And for, we don't want you guys to see that all the time. Some of my sources, and I'm going to stop sharing my screen to go on to the next person. How long are you online? In the United States, people spend more than six hours per day on digital media. And studies also show that 16 to 24 year olds spend an average of three hours a day on social media. Uh, this chart here shows uh, the daily hours spent with digital media in the United States from 2008 uh, to 2018. Uh, so if you see here, you could see the blue getting relatively bigger, which is your mobile device. So cell phones, uh, those are the biggest ones that have had such an increase of usage. Uh, the other green and yellow ones, which are desktop or laptops and other connected devices have pretty much remained the same over the course of the years. Digital media is now used more than ever. In today's world, all age groups are using the internet more than ever before. Uh, due to COVID-19, 
Uh, we are using technology every day for things like school, working, uh, going shopping, socializing with your friends, uh, and to, for fun activities to do. A lot of people are holding them now online. With adolescents doing online learning, they are only a notification or a pop-up away from using social media during their day. So as you guys are going to school, uh, you can get a simple uh, text uh, notification in your pocket or see it on your screen. Um, and it is a revolving door and you guys are gonna be around it 24 seven. So social media content. Most people only post positive things on their social media account. Uh, this is to uphold an image to others that you guys are having a fun and happy life. Some of the most common social media posts are big life events, accomplishments, and vacations. Um, typically friends, family, strangers are able to engage in these posts and comment their opinions. Uh, it's also known that uh, the more likes you get on a post uh, can increase your feelings of self-worth. Uh, not getting enough validation on social media can increase depression and anxiety, among, especially amongst teens. Um, social media has become, increasing, has become an increasingly dramatic environment for body image in the past few years, and celebrities have had a huge influence on the shift. Many influencers use professional Photoshop to alter their photos to be, in a sense, perfect, uh, which unfortunately does put an unrealistic beauty standard on teens, so that does take a big toll on uh, teens as well. Um, a 2018 study found that 59% of U.S. teens have personally experienced abusive online behaviors. 42% of teens say that uh, they have been called offensive names online or over their cell phone. 32% of teens say that uh, there has been false rumors spread about them on the internet. And 16% of teens have said that they have been target of physical threats online. Uh, and then in 2019, uh, there was a study that found that adolescents who spend more than three hours per day on social media may be at a heightened risk for mental health problems, particularly internalizing your problems. Uh, so that means just not sharing it, keeping all of your feelings uh, bottled up inside. Multiple studies have also found a strong correlation between heavy social media use and increased risk for depression, anxiety, eating disorders, loneliness, self-harm, and even suicidal thoughts. Social media and gambling. A lot of social media sites such as YouTube, Facebook, Pinterest, Snapchat, Twitter, Instagram, and many others will have sidebars or games pop up while you are on those sites. Those games will seem colorful. They may have images that draw youth in such as cartoons or superheroes. And youth are already on those sites anyways. So having the sidebars or the games just pop up gives them easy access to it. Many times the games don't require any money, um, so it makes it seem like there is no risk. However, it can be a gateway to actual gambling, which is the part that does make it risky. Um, playing these games gives the youth a false sense of being able to win. The games that are on the social media websites seem very easy to win. It doesn't make it seem very hard at all. So it gives the youth again that false sense so if you think it's that easy to win on these sites they might be tempted to try a gamble an actual gambling site using real money and then they find themselves losing real money and being in trouble because they didn't realize how hard it actually would be These are reasons why youth reported playing online gambling games for no money. And this was taken from 15 to 18 year olds. 59% said it was because they were bored. 49% said it because it was fun. 30% said it was because it was a good way to spend free time or spare time that they had. 22% said it was on a social networking site such as Facebook anyways. So again, that easy access. 15% 15 report, 15 reported the thrill or rush of playing. 14% reported that it was because their friends were involved or organized the interactive game. And 11% said it was a good way to improve skills to play for real money. Thank you so much for joining our presentation. And if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to call the Seaway Valley Prevention Council at 315-713-4861.